drop that, unfold it, turn it on. Lower the thing at the back. Turn that on. But, but having those productions, we're not getting a lot of money, but I'm getting enough money in productions that um, I can pay for leased equipment, um, I can buy mineral feed for the cows, and that type of thing. It's, it's not like, oh, I'm out of mineral feed, and I've only got 10,000 in the bank, and my leasing fees until November is going to eat all of, those, all of that money up, and possibly some more and then I'm going to be able to sell the canola. So it, it's, it's kind of a, um, just a, it's, it's a safety net. Uh, I don't have to worry too much about, oh, good grief, I'm not going to have. I can just say, I've got a little bit of money coming in each month. It's probably round about 10,000 pounds all told. We're producing butter at the dairy. We're producing uh, bread at the bread factory, uh, the bakery, and we have the tomatoes being produced. Unfortunately, for some reason, my cows have stopped producing, and I'm a little bit concerned that that might be a mod conflict, but I'm not sure. <coughs> it may be that I sold off all my old cows and my younger cows aren't old enough to produce milk. Um, but I figure, I think it's sometime around October, November, my cows should be producing milk. And if they're not, then I've got to figure out what broke. It's not a big deal because I'm always transporting all of my milk down to the dairy. And the dairy has about three years supply of milk. so. It's not like I'm going to stop producing money from the milk I've already got because they're currently running through a very slow production. But, uh, yeah, ha having the constant income is, is definitely something that is an improvement for Farm Sim 22 over Farm Sim 19. Farm Sim 19, it was really... Um, well, every th every thing that you can sell in the game that is produced and sold has a best price one time per year. Um, on Oakfield Farm, we had sheep, and so um, using seasons, the sheep only produced um, wool during the spring, and the best price for wool was their final month of production so you you would usually end up with a little bit of wool at the end of the year or at the end of spring that was just outside best selling time and um, okay we'll 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 hold that over till next year the best time to sell sheep is exactly the same day so we would sell our sheep and uh, because the flock was at maximum that the farm could have. So each sheep has one baby and each um, each field could hold 500 sheep. So we would have 1,500 sheep. At the end of the wool production uh, period we would sell half the sheep from each field. So 250 sheep from each field. I would make as much money from selling 250 sheep as I did from selling wool from 1,500 sheep per year. But then we were good to continue until the next year. And we had all the arable crops to tide us over meantime but again we're only selling each one of those once a year which is why it's good to diversify your crop some crops sell um, in fall some crops sell best in winter and other crops sell best uh, in spring 
can't remember what crops we've got in the ground or in the silos. I think we we harvested. Um, obviously, the barley and the oats went straight down to the flour mill, and they're being turned into flour right now because, of course, they are. But the canola is sitting in our in our farm, um, and then yeah, we got eighty one thousand liters of canola. Show price fluctuations. Best time to sell is November. Wheat best time to sell is December. Same with oats. But if you go down to January for sorghum, soybeans, their best time is June. Basically, I think this or the previous month. So we sold the, the soybeans from last year, last month. Oh, I'm going to win. You need to stop. No, you. Ah, that sucks. Well, hopefully. I didn't win. It was a dead heat. But yeah, so... So I'm trying to maximise profits from the farm by selling on the best month for each thing. But by diversifying your crop, that means that some things can be sold at different points in the year. But you're still kind of... I didn't hit GPS, did I? You're still kind of limited as to uh, when you can get the money. So that harvest has come up. I don't have any way to purchase that. I wish I did, but the canola is not going to be ready to sell until towards the end of the year. <coughs> now that said, um, that baler is keeping up with this. Yeah, I'm only doing 10 miles an hour. So if I do 11 miles an hour, I pull ahead of the baler, and if I do 10 miles an hour, it keeps up. So I think... I'll go up to 12 here. And it's really the transfer of bales to the wrapper and the dropping of the bales from the wrapper that's, that slows it down. So we should have enough of a headland at both ends of the field for us to be able to get this tractor turned around and we'll go back to alternate rows one way and then alternate rows back. But yeah, you know, the, as I said, the challenge is income. It's, it's having the money when I need it and I can do contracts to make additional income. <coughs> but that's another one of my artificial limits I can only do contracts one day in a month we're playing three day months so I can do contracts we've selected July 2 to do contracts so I can do as many contracts as I can fit in today but then tomorrow it'll be July 3 no more contracts and yeah, that's just a self-imposed rule because otherwise during the months that I don't have anything to do on my farm I can just get out there and knock out 50 contracts in a day and yeah 150 contracts is going to make me a ton of money and it's going to put me into a little bit of an easy mode so just not doing that um, and the same the part part of the whole selling the um, the perishables was the same deal. Um, 
I could hold on to my tomatoes until the best selling price for tomatoes. But it's a little unrealistic. If you've got tomatoes, they're going to go bad if you don't get them sold. And we don't have decent storage. Grain can be stored in silos. So we're not making the bestest of money from all of our produce. It's the arable produce is making the best money. And then... Hmm, what am I going to do here? We'll do this. I kind of didn't make enough of a headland belt down here to uh, get. Uh, get this tractor turned around. That's, that's kind of the odd thing. Yeah, I, I need this size of tractor to run this mowing kit. So, wide easy turns, obviously. It would be nice to be able to run this mowing kit on the Deutz, but pff, that's just not happening. And I don't have... JCB would probably do it, but the big JCB would be the one that's needed for this, and it doesn't have the four-wheel steering. So, yeah. We make do with what we have. And since, as I said, we don't have any money. But, yeah, okay, so philosophy of the farm, the easiest way to make more money is not to buy more equipment, but to buy more fields. So, one of the big goals or um, criteria I have here. I want to buy more fields, and so I, I'd like to avoid buying new equipment, if I can. Although sometimes you look at the new equipment and say, that would fit the farm per perfectly. But again, I don't have any money. So I've got 40, now $47,000, barely under. But we're doing contracts, so we're gonna have money coming in at the end of this we're paying for the worker in the the baler i could skip that and do the baling manually as well but uh yeah we'll 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 buy we'll eat the uh the worker pay but if i want a nice new harvester i've got to uh make money in contracts or if I want to buy a field now, I've got to make money in contracts. <coughs> the other alternative would be... Um, let's drop to 11. Uh, the other alternative would be to wait until the canola sucked. And then we can buy you know, a new field or whatever. But you know, the, the risk is um, we're playing with variable field prices. So, the risk is the fields around us may be at an inflated price that is not um, financially astute um, decision to buy. And we've seen that in the past. Most of the, most of the fields along the top have been plus seventy percent of uh, average land value so I, I ain't spending my money on a field that's that heavily inflated um, conversely we bought a few fields at half price that's a good thing but I can't take advantage of that if I don't have the money in the bank I could borrow the money and sometimes I will do just because I know I've got the income tomorrow but this is available right this minute We'll see, but I mean, we could look at that. Um, I go to farmland. See, there's these two fields here. That one is at 35% over. That's at 70%. That one, well, that's cheap. That one, eh, discount. That one, 83%. That one, 68%. 
So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to buy those fields that are overpriced. The cheaper ones, 35% off, hmm, that would be an interesting idea. Where's the bailer? Over there. Okay, still keeping up. And, and the same is true of equipment. I could buy my, yeah, I can look and price out a tractor and say, well, I need 150,000 for a new tractor. Or I could wait for the opportunity for it to come up in a sale at 50% off. That's nice, but do I have the money in the bank to buy it at 50% off? And right now I don't. Which is, again, why we're doing some contracts. Um, the other thing I want to be able to do today is uh, harvest a couple of cereal fields so that we can top up the flour production in our flour mill because I know for a fact we do not have enough flour in our mill to last us the coming year because we just updated or we just leveled up the uh, the bread production so we're producing four um, four crates of bread per calendar month as opposed to two but to maintain that you need about 100,000 litres of wheat, uh, flour at the mill at the bakery so I have to make sure that's that's all set up for us um, Again, this is... Oh no, I think I can sneak round the uh, other side of that bale. So is the, this is the... This is the fourth field we've done. So we have one more field to do in the southwest corner of the map. And then uh, we can do the collecting. And that'll be it for uh, baling this month. We already baled our fields. Our grass field is not going to be available until I think. August or maybe September I might have already done it once oops so yeah we've that will be all of the baling for this month. But as I said, I want to do a couple of grain contracts just to top off the uh, the flour production. It won't take much. Um, there's also the potential there might be some sorghum a little bit later in the year to harvest on a contract that uh, that we can also use to top up the flour mill. So little tufts of grass lying around. Obviously the problem with doing this is uh, bailing dude is probably going to miss most of these anyway, unless I'm driving in a straight line. Oh, good grief. There's a lot of bales there. Uh, okay. I think maybe I increase this headland a little bit. And each little bit I do like this gives me a little bit more turnaround space along the 
bottom of the field. And that's great. So I'm I'm looking at this. I need to do this one. I need to do one to the left. Because I there's too many rows there adjacent to each other. And then we'll do the one to the right if everything works out. I don't know. Still, as I said, these are going to be worth about, there's five contracts that are approximately um, Nine to ten thousand. They're over nine thousand. Some are a little bit over ten. That's uh, not the greatest either. So I can do the the two on each side of this row in one turn around. Uh, we should be okay. I can go up that far one. Probably come down this one and then we'll go back up on the one on the right and get the bits we missed at the top there. <coughs> well, we've been messing around in this field, so an awful lot of mist grass but again how much of that is really going to be much in the way of uh, usable for us later and that last field is a small one uh, how's that look? yeah that's that's awkward. Um, so I'm probably going to end up mowing it and then manually uh, uh, bailing it. Just because it's, it's just going to be a mess otherwise. Still. We are almost done here. Now that's one of the changes I do miss from Realismus's uh, seasons is there is no um, grass, hay, straw decay um, in with the old seasons mod that we used to play with. The grass would decay if you left it out overnight. Basically, it would start a decay cycle. Um, with hay and straw, they stayed on the field forever until it rained. And then when it rained, they, it would reduce. Uh, it did make mixing TMR a little bit interesting, because you could grab a bale of hay, drive it across the yard in the rain to the, uh, the mixer wagon, and you could watch the, uh, the level of hay in the bale disappear as you drove. It did give me a, uh, a decided rule on if you are making TMR, you put the silage in first because silage doesn't decay. And then as soon as you put for it, uh, what's it, hay or straw in the uh, TMR mixer, um, you had forage and that doesn't decay either. So you wouldn't lose any hay if your TMR mixer was left out in the rain. So long as you put in the silage first. If you put hay in, you could end up losing some to decay before you got the straw or the, the um, silage in it. So that was a little bit of a problem sometimes, if you weren't paying attention. Okay, how are we going to do this? I think... Swing that way. Pop this bit 
and then turn around. So long as this gets cut, oops, okay, I've got a bail stuck, oh, I've got a bail stuck on the other side, oh, they are all so much stuck. Uh, okay, we'll fold them up, and that might be a problem for the bailing dude. front one, let the baler come through here, and yes, oops, and again, stuck on the thing. certainly damaged the wrapping on that bale and that should be fine. Well, turn off the worker and we can go pick up a ton of this grass because we did miss a lot of it. We also didn't cut some of it. That is what it is. Oh, I didn't cut this corner either. Well, in another two, three months, we may be back to this field to cut it again, in which case we'll be able to cut the bits we didn't this time. Actually, um, something I don't usually do is watch uh, foreign videos on model railways, um, mostly because I only speak English, so uh, there's very little point in me watching a German 